The same principle is used uh, to light our streets nowadays. We have a sodium lamp, and here I have a street light, which is uh, actually a, a sodium discharge lamp. Notice the initial colour that we see here is actually due to some neon. But after a while, you'll see the colour change. We can begin to see some yellow come in here. Okay? And this is due to the other element that's in this lamp, sodium. Now, sodium is actually a metal, but it melts very easily and it can turn into a gas fairly easily as well. And this is what's gradually happening here. The neon is helping the sodium to vaporise, turn into a gas, and then this will give out a really brilliant light as well. And this is used to light up the streets. And this will be a rather nice yellow colour. But we need to leave that a little while before we can get the sodium to vaporise um, and see the full colour from it. But let's have a look at the lamp. Um, here we are. Here is our sodium street lamp, and if we look very carefully, we see that there are nodules. These are the uh, metal lumps of sodium contained in this lamp. We have to wait for those to melt and then to vaporise, and then passing the electric current through this will excite these sodium atoms and we'll get the yellow street lamp colour. So we'll keep an eye, half an eye on this. Well, this lamp was supplied uh, by Philips, and this is the packet that it came in. It says here, for safety's sake, remove the lamp immediately if the outer bulb is broken. This lamp contains sodium. Well, this is what we've been talking about, the sodium. Contact with water can result in a violent reaction stroke ignition. Avoid contact with water if the lamp breaks. Well, it's quite clear here, it really wants us to avoid water mixing with sodium. Well, I thought I'd show you why. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.